As you know, the financial elite attaches great importance to providing us with an external enemy. Huns, Nazis, Communists, Terrorists, etc. It also creates internal enemies by dividing us on race, sex and class. Then it dreams up economic, social, and natural enemies, like the CV-19 pandemic, the war on poverty, drugs and global warming. Thus, it diverts attention from itself, the real enemy, the Illuminati, organized in Freemasonry, an international satanic cult which controls our political, cultural and economic life, with magical acumen. Their smug victory symbols are everywhere. On the US Great Seal and the logos of countless corporations, the UN and even the city where I live, Winnipeg. Look for dots and circles, pyramids without capstones, eyes of horses, and swooshes denoting sunrises. All politicians who stand a chance are Masons, including Bush, Obama, Clinton and McCain. They don't pose serious opposition. Bush has doubled the national debt and cut the value of the US dollar in half, but did you hear him criticized for this? On his watch we had 9-11s, the Iraq War, Hurricane Katrina, Levy's Blown, and the mortgage meltdown. No one was held responsible. On the international front, Obama and Ahmadinejad, Sarkozy, Merkel and Putin, Bush and McCain are all members of this club, despite pretend disputes. They work for the international banking cartel, aided by a small army of dupes and opportunists. None of this would be possible if they didn't also own the mass media. Our political life essentially is theater. The author of the Protocols of Zion Chortles. Who will ever suspect then, that all these peoples were stage managed by us, according to a political plan, which no one has so much as guessed at in the course of many centuries. As early as 1823, Hon Ronsky wrote. Secret societies are detached into groups, distinct and apparently opposed, professing the most contrary opinions of the day, so as to direct, apart and with confidence, all parties, political, religious, economic, and literary. They, in order to receive common direction, are again united to an unknown center, an unknown supreme committee, who governs the world. World government, the new world order, is the goal of Freemasonry. Order is created out of chaos. It will be achieved by a dialectical process of phony wars, caused by false flag operations, brainwashing, sensitivity training, propaganda, slander and coercion. According to Jerry Lina's book, Architects of Deception, Freemasonry is Judaism for Gentiles. It is based on the Kabbalah and is the executive political organ of the Jewish financial elite. Masonic Jews run it. Apparently, Jews belong to all lodges, but non-Jews can't belong to Jewish ones, like the Bnei B'rith. These comprise the executive branch. We are witnessing the culmination of a millennium-long crusade by certain Pharisaic Jews and their allies to overthrow Christian civilization and establish a primitive tyranny outlined in detail in the Protocols of Zion. Before I continue the video, I want to thank you for your support. And forgive me for the ads that appears, I take it as a contribution from you to me. The money from advertising is not much, but it is enough for me to donate to people in need. I'm not asking you to do anything to make this daily video. And I apologize, because I can't reply to all your comments, but I definitely read them one by one. So, let's continue the video. Yuri Lina cites Professor Valery Yemelyanov, who told a Soviet Communist Party Congress in 1979. The Jewish Freemason pyramid controls 80% of the economy of the capitalist countries and 90-95% to of the information media. In 1938, an insider Christian Rakovsky described the situation as follows. In Moscow, there is communism. In New York, capitalism. It is all the same as thesis and antithesis. Analyze both. Moscow is objective communism, but objectively state capitalism. New York. Capitalism subjective, but communism objective. A personal synthesis, truth. The financial international, the capitalist communist one. They. They refers to the Illuminati, the highest rung of Freemasonry. On 19 November 1937, the influential Fabian Nicholas Murray Butler addressed a banquet in London with the words, Communism is the instrument with which the financial world can topple national governments and then erect a world government with a world police and world money. Rakovsky says, the real aim of Freemasonry is to bring about communism. Communism, another word, the NWO, involves the destruction of the four pillars of our human identity. Race, religion, nation and family. This is the real meaning of diversity, multiculturalism, feminism, porn, sexual liberation, and gay rights. The pagan Masonic spell is cast with an amazing consistency and conformity through the mass media and education systems. For example, lately you cannot escape images of powerful women in male roles and exhortations to women in traditional societies to seek independence. In 1909, Paul Coppenalbancelli wrote, 
Masons repeat what they have heard from the preachers of the occult powers. The journalist, the publisher, the pornographer, the professor. The state of mind, created and filled in the lodges, is the profane medium met everywhere, and the mind is altered by it. And as Freemasons perform this duty as propagandists without revealing themselves as Masons, the activity which they exert is not recognized as Masonic. Freemasonry shows a false face to the world. Lena writes that Freemasonry is closely associated with socialism and communism, as well as with organized crime. The primary task of Freemasonry is to combat knowledge of the real world and to ignore the facts from true history. Exoteric Freemasonry is for the rubes. It is about charity and making good men better, etc. The real Freemasonry, the esoteric, or occult, known only to adepts, is about conquering the world for Lucifer. Thus, we always must discern between the formal and the informal, the subjective and the objective. Formally, we live in a free society. Informally, our leaders are dupes or traitors, dedicated to our ultimate enslavement. Formally, we have a free press and education system. Informally, only those views that correspond to the occult Masonic and Enlightenment agenda get a hearing. Formally, art and entertainment are free expressions. Informally, with a few exceptions, only entertainment that advances the occult program will be encouraged. Countless movies fall under the category of predictive programming, teaching people to expect satanic scenarios and horrifying catastrophes. Formally, Muslim terrorists flew planes into the symbols of American freedom and prosperity on September 11, causing them to collapse killing over 3,000 people. Informally, the instruments of the Masonic financial elite, intelligence agencies, secret societies, detonated the buildings to justify gutting civil rights and starting gratuitous wars and the $5 trillion bendoggle. Formally, elections express the people's will and desire for change. Informally, elections are required to maintain the illusion of freedom and secure the taxes and bodies needed for endless wars. Formally, they believe in our country. Informally, they are doing everything to undermine it, so the population will accept world government. Formally, they are Christians. Barack Obama is a Christian. Informally, Luciferianism, Freemasonry, Kabbalist Judaism, Secularism, is the religion of the post-Enlightenment West. George Bush and Barack Obama are Satanists who proudly uses the horn goat symbol. By professing Christianity, they discredit it. Right now, I'd say, the most revealing book on our predicament is Jerry Lina's Architects of Deception. I reviewed it once, but I commend it to you again. Here's another example of the revelations it contains. Most of George Washington's generals and the signatories of the Declaration of Independence were Masons. The values of the Declaration are valid, but they fall under the category of the formal. Informally, Linus says. The Freemasons created the United States of America as an effective base for their world-encompassing activities and to attain their utmost aim, world supremacy. Our lives are built on a monstrous fraud. Our political and cultural leaders are chosen by their willingness to betray us for fame and fortune. Humanity has passed into a twilight zone between reality and an occult spell. Our only hope is for the formal to trump the informal and for the dupes to wake up before it is too late. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.